people, it's Cara here and I am so, so mad. So welcome back, um, still sun is shining, which is really nice. I seem to be really fortunate in catching sunshine um, in the last few weeks when I've been um, sewing. Um, I realised my camera angle is slightly different every time I set up, so uh, apologies about that. And actually I seem to be cutting off Michelle's beautiful um, beautiful whippet, uh, you know, little, little Lara sitting up there behind me, but I promise you, um, he's still sitting there. So, how are you? How, how have you all been? Um, week four of being with you, I think. Uh, yeah, apologies, I'm just repeating myself. Um, a lot's going on. Um, just trying to think what's going on in the world. Oh, just, just lots of different things right now. I'm still um, settling into my new job um, and uh, exploring the world of dentistry, which is really exciting. So I'm now a practice manager there. And uh, one of the things that's changed a great deal is um, what I can wear to work, actually. Um, so I used to work in a, um, a lovely shop, um, but now I work uh, at a practice. So it's a little bit more sort of smart business as opposed to smart casual um but i'm always quite a smart looking person anyway i think um but yeah i hope you're enjoying this little mini series of mine please do let me know i do love to hear from you and if you haven't subscribed yet then do please i absolutely love being here i keep saying that every week because it's true so what have i been up to what am i making what do i want to show you so today you're thinking oh my word does she ever not wear these linen tops the answer is I wear them all the time. Don't forget I've got three and I do wear them in fair rotation. But the reason I've got this um, this top back on, and actually I think I was wearing the cream one last week, but this is white, is because I wanted to show you the jacket. So this is a jacket from La Cala Patterns. Um, the name of it has gone completely out of my head. So I'll put the details across the screen here of the pattern. It's likely to be a pattern number as opposed to a name. Um, I saw this months ago, I'm going to say December, January time, uh, literally a, a tiny screenshot came up on my Instagram feed of this jacket. I thought, oh, I really like this. Um, so let me stand up. I appreciate it takes my head off. It's got a sort of a Nauru style um, collar stand to it. Being black, it's incredibly difficult for you to see the detail. I'm really sorry about that. I will put some fit... Uh, fit picture or footage which is footage um in in uh, for you um so it's got a lovely it's a proper jacket um it's got uh can you see that yeah you got um whatever that's called cuff area um and it's got it, it's, it's essentially quite like a denim jacket in its construction i suppose because and i'm not going to do it justice here at all it's all made up of panels so you've got two panels here two panels here and at the bottom here I don't think you can see which is hugely annoying is this is a seam line here and then you've got bottom panels here as well um hopefully in the footage I put in you might be able to see that a little better I put these lovely buttons on it that I got from the tiny haber haberdashery in Tyfest um near where I used to uh, where I, near where I grew up because I kind of give it so, sort of a I don't know sort of a bit of a twist really I suppose um, I didn't want to put denim sort of style buttons on, you know, denim jacket styly, because I wanted it to be sort of work work wearable, I suppose. And I think it looks super super smart with um, with this with this linen top. And I've actually not that I would wear these to work. Can you see there? I've actually got my lovely zebra zebra wide leg trousers on and I just love that as a combination uh, it looks super smart I appreciate you can't see my head there but let's let's face it that's not always a bad thing <laughs> oh my mad hair here um so I absolutely love this and the Lacala patterns if you're sitting there thinking oh never heard of that I've made a few of their patterns actually over the last year and a bit maybe a couple of years now it's a Russian sewing company but their their patterns um do come up in English but they are their instructions are incredibly sparse so you do need to be a reasonably accomplished sewer in order to understand what they mean because they'll literally say make the collar um, construct the sleeves that sort of thing but I think this had maybe seven steps in it um, and I made a jacket out of the seven steps it, there's nothing particularly complicated about it it does I wish you could see it I don't know what you can see let me hold that up there's a button, a button placket there. Um, so there's a cuff, 
uh, there's the, I don't know what you even call that, the sort of the reveal area here for, for the, you know, the cuff. Um, obviously it's got um, a proper collar stand here, um, but the construction is very simple. So it's not lined, it's, um, it's raw edges on the inside. So I did overlock everything using black on the inside. Um, and I'm really, really pleased with it. Now this languished, um, as you may know, if you've been watching me a long time, I do batch cutting. So I cut out a lot of projects all at once and then they sit piled up just on the unit that normally sits here. Um, and these sat at the bottom of my, um, my, my ready to go pile, if you like, for a long time, because I cut these out months ago, maybe even in February, March time. Both of the jackets, the one I finished last week, which I showed you last week, which is the Molly jacket from Fibre Mood and this one. But the weather has been so variable. Um, and actually we're having some renovation works done, which means the table is covered with all the stuff from the garden. So I can't cut anything out. I haven't been able to cut anything out for weeks. Um, so finally, I had, these were the only projects I left, had left to go. But because the weather has been so variable, actually a jacket like this is going to be super useful. I just finished this this week, so I can't wait to start wearing it. Um, and yeah, we're in, where are we? we're in September already, so that feels really, oh, sounds kind of autumnal, doesn't it? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about transitions and things like that. So when I put the next outfit on, you're going to be like, oh, why are you making shorts? But I'll explain why in a second. Just bear with me. I'm going to go and change. Here I am again. So um, as you'll be aware that I'm fortunate enough to work with a number of different wonderful um, companies. I've got an ice cream van coming down the road. Uh, sorry about that. You probably hear the twinkling tunes of the ice cream van. How lovely is that? Yeah, it's quite sunny out there today. It's a little bit chillier than it was um, a few weeks ago. But um, anyway, so Dragonfly Fabrics, um, the lovely Dirta and Simon, um, I um, do some blogging work for them and I approached them and asked them if uh, they'd be interested in me doing a blog on the Mile End sweatshirt and the Plateau shorts and joggers from Closet Core Patterns. Now, they, Closet Core Patterns have just released, released a beautiful dress, but this was the, the make just before that from their Montreal leisure wear collection. Um, I really felt that um, the Mylan sweatshirt has a lot of um, options for layering and transitioning out of summer or through summer into autumn. So I actually did a blog for them just a, uh, was a number of weeks ago now. So please, I'll leave a link to it. Do head over to their website and you'll be able to see all of the details about this, um, this pattern on there. But let, you show, let me show you some of the details. Actually, I've got the pattern up here. Um, I'm always getting up and down in my videos. What do you think of this little mini series I'm doing? Is it okay? Are you enjoying it? They're very short and sweet. Um, so just a little sort of taster each week of what I've been up to. Um, sometimes I think it's nice just to dip into someone's sewing life um, and not necessarily, um, well, I absolutely adore really long sewing videos and I have no doubt I'll do some in the future. But I really wanted just to see you every week really and just get some contact content with you every week and if I'm just sharing with you what is literally on my sewing table that week, I figured that would be a nice way of doing it. So let me know what you think, please. Um, so yeah, the, um, the Mile End sweatshirt here, and it comes with the most wonderful amount of variation. So I've actually made what they call um, View C, um, which is the, the hoodie here, um, and it comes with a kangaroo pocket. If I stand up, you can see that. There we go, the kangaroo pocket. And what I really liked about this was the open neckline. So sweatshirts are often like this one, uh, view C. So I'll turn over the packet there. You can see you've got view C, uh, view A, sorry, and C. Um, but also you get the option to put this wonderful drawstring um, across the front, which um, brings, it's quite a boxy shape. And the drawstring really brings the shape in. And so what I decided to do is to do a combination of the two. So you can see possibly in the, I'm going to put some pictures in in anyway. So you can see there you've got the crossover. The light seems to have gone a bit funny, sorry. Autumnal light, I hope you can see that all right. Um, yeah, so you've got the crossover here. If I stand at an angle, it seems to be a bit better. You've got the lovely kangaroo pocket, and then you've got the drawstring. Um, as I say, the, the pictures I'll put in, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. Sorry, the light is coming in and out. I do apologize. Um, 
yeah there you go you can see that there um i will i'll put the hood up so you can see it Do -do. there we go it's a lovely big hood um yeah now i made this as you can see in a, quite a lightweight what i would consider probably a pontaroma now ordinarily it's made in sort of sweatshirting fabric and that in itself would change the, the, the vision or the, the shape of this outfit. Now I wanted to make one in lightweight because it's transitional, it's still quite warm, even though it's late September. Um, and obviously you can layer this up. I, di I didn't share with you actually, it's some beautiful pleats. Let me see if I can see. Some beautiful pleats, Ooh, can you see those? I hope you can see the two beautiful pleats here um, in, in the sleeve shape, um, which just, yes, yeah, just a lovely detail. I was really drawn to this because there's so many different um, techniques. I love closet core patterns for that. And the instruction booklet, as ever, is, is absolutely genius, takes you through it really, really well. I love it. it the, the length comes to just below my hip, so it's not long. So that's something to bear in mind. The other things you need to bear in mind, um, the crossover is actually quite low. So um, I'm, if I went and put a t-shirt on, you'd see the t-shirt would come to, you know, around my necklace here. Um, and you saw, probably saw just a second there that, um, now I'm quite big chested, as you know. Um, and this is it, this is quite low, but one of the reasons I like it because of the openness, it makes me look less busty. Um, in fact, it makes me look pretty much flat chested, which is a small miracle. Now, for me, that's a plus thing. For other things, that might not be such a good thing. But just to bear in mind, it is actually quite open, um, which I've heard on some reviews people are less keen on. The other thing people are less keen on and is a little surprising is that the hood and the construction is, so this isn't lined, so you'll be, you'll probably be used to a, a Tilly in the Buttons Stella hoodie or something like that, uh, where you've got a lining for the hood. This is a single lined hood and so a few people have said that they would prefer to line it because you can see all of your raw edges, <laughs> including the raw edges for the inside. Now, I chose to make a feature of that, so I've actually got my right in close here. I um, don't want to flash you too much. I've got. Uh, I've chosen to use my monochrome overlocking thread because I think it looks really cool with the the burgundy. I love this colour, and so. Um, you can see and I've purposely made it so that you can see my seams which is not something we often do um, but I knew about that because I'd read all the reviews before um, and actually I chose to combine the um, the tie well, I just flashed you then I'm sorry about that um, not very much I think uh, I chose to combine the tie at the bottom in order to draw it in because as a boxy shape with my um, larger top half you sometimes can lose the definition. So if I step back, I've actually also got it on with the shorts, okay? So these are plateau shorts. Um, they've got a lovely scallop edge here. Um, they've got some really nice features in terms of the pockets. And they've also got patch pockets on the back here too. So I took some pictures for, um, let me sit back down again and I'll explain. I actually took some pictures for the blog, which I'll show you, because the, the joggers themselves also have some lovely design features. So there is, you know, on a pocket you normally put, I'm going to explain this bad, you've normally got the, um, badly, you've normally got the pocket facing and then the pocket bag and sort of, they sort of sit like that, don't they? So that you can normally see the facing as your, um, as the back of your pocket or the bit you can see of your pocket when you stand up and then you normally got your side seam there but on the plateau joggers and shorts there is no side seam in the pocket it's actually incorporated in both the back piece and the front piece now we're not explaining that very well but it is a beautiful design feature that um, Closet Core has come up with um, and if I, I, I took some pictures for the blog and I, I explained it better in the blog I think than I am doing today, so apologies for that. But it's a really sweet design feature. Um, they are elasticated at the top, um, and I actually, I've actually chosen to make it fr flat at the front 
and then you can't see that but ruched at the back so that they're flat fronted because actually the um the gathering is sewn in um which looks really nice but i chose and it's mostly because it's quite a lightweight ponty you've got quite a lot of fabric to, to gather in and um, so i decided to make them flat at the front and then oh actually no i just ruched it at the side so it's flat at the front and flat at the back I think you can see that in the pictures which which i'll add in overall i absolutely love this um if i'm honest when i put it on my daughter said oh not sure it's not one of my favorite your favorite well, not, not one of my favorite makes then i put them together and she sort of understood it a bit more she prefers it if i wear a t-shirt underneath because you can sort of see the detail a little bit better um uh, that sounds crazy but it's true but i really like it i didn't change the length of the sleeves they came up just literally to the um to the to to my to my wrists here sometimes you know sometimes tops come shorter and longer that sits about right they are i did take them in they are very big sleeves so i actually took in quite a bit off the sleeves um because they were quite oversized now don't get me wrong it is it is an oversized top i also sized down a whole size for the top so i think i made a size should have been a size 14 and made size 12 However, for the shorts, I regret not making a size 12. I stuck to a size 14, but actually they are quite big. So, so just something to bear in mind, they, they, it is an oversized project. There is some lovely features on the top that I've not talked about, particularly if you're making um, the options uh, here, because this side seam comes right round to the front on both sides which is a phenomenal opportunity to do some colour blocking and you could use some fabric out of your stash. The other thing I haven't talked about is it's a beautiful curved yoke on the back which just adds such lovely detail and again you could do some colour blocking there. It, it's the sort of pattern that you could look at and um, and, and change and tweak and do different things for many many makes um, and I think that just is such a lovely a lovely thing. Um, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really had a chance to, um, no, it's not true. I have worn this a lot. Um, um, yeah, mostly I've worn it around the house because I've, I've been out and doing other things and bits and pieces, but it's, oh, it's just lovely. Um, it looks great with jeans, uh, the top and the shorts are super comfortable and yeah, have been perfect for this time of year really, where it's still, still warm, um, but a little bit of a dip in the air, if that makes sense. So yeah, really, really pleased. And thank you to Dragonfly Fabrics for supporting me um, with the pattern on that. The fabric I actually bought from, I think I want to say pound, pound a meter, I think. Um, so I think I've got three meters for 10 pounds. Well, maybe it's not pound a meter then. But anyway, I'll try and remember and, and link the details below because it's, yeah, I've got a lot of fabric for £10 and that's what I made this out of for my for my blog. Um, I think I've got one more thing to talk to you about so hold on and I'll go and grab that for you. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh my word, is she sitting in front of me wearing a swimming costume? You'd be right. Um, <laughs> Only I would be showing you swimming costume at the end of summer, um, like almost the beginning of autumn. Maybe even cast as autumn if you're looking out of your window today and it's absolutely tipping it down with rain and it's freezing. But yes, I've made swimwear. Um, now you have to bear in mind, I actually made this a few weeks ago, but wanted to share it with you. Now this is the sort of lady walking by shouting her dog's going ballistic, so apologies. This is actually the Sandpiper and um, swimming costume. I think I think they call it a swimming costume, but it's actually a top and bottoms. Now, um, I really like this. I actually made it out of um, what can only be described as a remnant of some black um, lycra that I had. Now, I have never specifically bought um, swimming costume fabric. I've always bought matte lycra, which I know is swimming costume fabric. I just wanted to bust some myths about um, how much money you need to spend on um, fabric really, because I bought um, I bought a, a lot of lycra from um, Rainbow Fabrics, um, and I, it's just lycra, it's just four-way stretch lycra. But you also see swimming wear fabric, you see active wear fabric. Um, my favourite place to buy fabric from is, uh, so lycra from, is um, Tear Night Fabrics, where you can get a metre of matte four-way stretch lycra for £6.99. Um, I don't remember where I got this one from because it's a little bit more sheeny than the um, than the tear tear night fabrics, um, so I don't think it's from there. 
Um, so it's going to be fine. It's stretchy and it'll be absolutely fine. So um, I'm going to show. I'm going to show you the top. Now I am not wearing the bottoms of the Sam Piper um, swimming costume, and I'll show you why in a second. So this is the top. Um, I just really like it. I am big chested, as you may know, and this is. It comes in a size cup B, I think, and a cup D. So I made the cup D in a size 12. Um, you get some lovely options. You get a nice big deep band here or a shorter band. If I turn around, I hope you can see that. Um, it's a lovely cut in on the top here. Do you know what? I couldn't run in this, but the level of support it's giving me is plenty um, for going swimming, which I'm super pleased about. Now the bottoms, I'll explain why in a second. These are the Why May, Why Me? I might not be saying that right. In fact, I know I'm not saying that right. Uh, the Why May Shorts by Green Style Creations. <laughs> These look unusual little pockets in. No idea why you've got pockets in your shorts. It's not like you're going to put anything in there. But anyway, it's a feature. I love the deep band on these. So why am I not wearing the matching bottoms? <laughs> well, uh, life happens, real life, real sewing. So these are the bottoms. Don't you just love how I made everything in black, or a lot of things in black recently? You know that doesn't film well, Cara. You know this. Um, so these are the bottoms. Okay, and I actually really like them. If I put them in angle, you can see them a little bit better. Now I made few, I actually originally cut out view B, which is very high waisted, um, and then I thought, do you know what? Live dangerously. Cut out view A, um, and actually, so they're on the same pattern piece, and I literally just folded down the high bit and, and cut them out. So I'd already cut out the others, um, and these are very flattering indeed. I think for bikini bottoms, I'm not, you know. I'm, I'm me. I can't change who I am. I am what I am. I run. I live quite an active life. My belly, however, has a life of its own. Comes in, goes out. Sometimes it's huge. Sometimes it looks quite flat. And I think, ooh, um, but the next day it's big again. So my belly is my belly. <laughs> it comes with the rest of me, believe it or not. So I, on some days, would be more comfortable wearing a lower rise one than I would high rise. But the high rise really is only sucking in what's also there, if that makes sense. So I was going to be brave, um, in, in inverted commas, and wear a low rise. What I hadn't realised is that I had waved and stretched out the back. I think you can see that there. I am gutted by this because um, it's a bit of a wearable twirl. Um, <sighs> gutted so obviously I folded it over to see if I can eliminate the stretch um, but all that did was make them a little bit too high rise on the back side so sadly my matching bottoms are not wearable which I'm gutted about because I really was only tweaking them when I realized um, that there was an error um, in what I'd done the cut is really is really quite flattering um, I may go back to the higher rise one, um, but I, do, I need to be able to make a, a second pair of these in order to work out whether I want to keep these or go high rise. Because as you can see on these ones, um, they are high rise. And look, look, that's how much skin you can see. Um, I don't, you know, my tummy is doing what it does here. Well, do you know what? We're all humans. There's no such thing as perfect, no such thing as normal. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, whoever said that. Um, so I'm fiddling with my hair again, aren't I? But do you know what? I really like this. I didn't expect to like it. Um, I got the inspiration from, I didn't expect to like it because of being a busty lady, getting a bikini top to make me feel this supported. Well, it seems, it seems impossible to me. Um, they got the inspiration from uh, Liz from Vaco at Sews. Hi Liz, you're amazing. Um, thank you for being that way. Um, and uh, yeah, I just, it's, I love it. I could see many, many more. And I think she made four before she went on holiday and I can see why, because this sews up in no time at all. You make two, uh, two of the tops and two of the buttons, bottoms, one being the, the outer and one being the inner. You put them wrong sides together. I think you then zigzag them to base them together. Then you pop swimmer elastic um, on, I think I want to say on the outside and fold it to the inside. Megan Nilsson, I think it does it the other way around. I forget now. But, um, but yeah, basically, then you zigzag it. I actually overlocked it. Um, 
and then folded it because otherwise you end up with a raw edge which if you've been really neat in the first place it doesn't matter but I, I just felt like doing that so that's what I did and this is the result I genuinely made this in no time at all it's probably why I stretched these out um, although I've not had that happen before but you know it happens this is yeah I'm Oh, I'm loath to throw anything away, but I genuinely can't do anything to, to save that. Um, so I have ordered some more black. Um, in fact, that's the sound of them going in the bin. Um, there's not even enough there to save as remnants or anything like that. So I have ordered some um, some matte black lycra from TNI Fabrics, and I will make some bottoms. But in the meantime, these bottoms go beautifully with it. Um, and you're thinking, why are you making swimwear in September? Um, a, I love to swim, although I haven't been swimming um, for years because of the swimming pool um, closures and things like that in line with COVID. But very excitingly, our garden renovations, which I will show at some stage, um, are, are we going to have a hot tub? Ooh, a pucker, proper hot tub. Um, and I'm going to be in it every day. And therefore, I need a, a selection of swimwear um, because I am going to be in it probably twice a day. Um, I can't wait. So the, the hot tub doesn't turn up till... November, maybe even round to January, February time. So I'm way ahead of the curve. But um, when I was making, when I, we have had some warm days, so I did want to just test this out. I'm just so pleased. It makes me look slim somehow or other. Um, and I'm, yeah, I know I'm not unslim. I'm not saying that as a statement of fact. I, I just find it amazing that something so high, high way, high, high waist, high neckline, um, can still look flattering on me. Um, you know, don't forget I've had a whole lifetime, a whole, mo whole of my lifetime trying swimwear on um, and this is the first time I felt that comfortable in something. Although I have had a good run, haven't I, because I made the Megan Nielsen Colosso, Colosso um, swimming costume and really like that. And I also obviously have the top half um, of these uh, rash guard shorts which are made as the power bra. So I really like that too. So I think that's quite enough for me for one day. I really hope you're enjoying these bite-sized um, check-ins with me on a weekly basis. I'm gonna continue doing them, but please let me know if you, what you'd like to see, um, things you'd like me to talk about, experiment. I've never done a Q and A. Would you ever like me to do one of those? And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. Um, there are lots of ways you can support my channel. Number one is just being here. Number two, leave me a comment. Please like like the photo at uh, the photo like the video um if you have um that's one of the ways that youtube will help me spread the word of um so so mad to others the more people who like it the, the better the algorithms work and things like that but you can also buy me a coffee i would really appreciate that that's down in the com um the comments box below and um, details and links to that literally for the price of a cup of coffee um you can help support my channel um and you know what i would really like to have a cup of tea or coffee with you um and that's potentially the closest thing we'll be coming to that. But very, very much appreciated. So until next time, please stay safe and well. Great to see you all. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.